okay, so why am I making a video about Selena's killer, right? It is so pathetic. It's just for the views, right? No, it's not. The problem is Yolanda will be released out of jail in just a few years. And I wanted to make this video to raise the awareness of what is going on. That this person, and you will see why if you don't know yet, is pathetic and we need to do something. And for that matter, I made this video to highlight once more that this person cannot be free on the streets. There is a reason for why she's in jail, but there shouldn't be a reason why she would be released now. So, yeah, that's that. So please continue watching this video. Um, feel free to feel enraged, because I was too, and yeah, thank you. Hello beautiful people of the internet, and thank you so much for tuning into this video. Today is a rather sad day, rather sad video, because I am going to watch the interview with Selena's killer, basically the woman who murdered Selena. Why am I going to watch this video? I was not searching for this video, I came across that video since I was watching Selena's video and I got interested to see who that person was who uh, was the reason of Selena's passing in 1995. I know a little bit of the background story. It was cold-blooded murder. And I wanted to see that face of the woman. I wanted to hear what she has to say. Just get a grip of who that person was who is the reason that Selena isn't here anymore. It's a rather sad video, but I really wanted to watch that and I figured why not watch it with you, to, you guys together. Maybe you have something to say about that, maybe you have something to comment, please feel free to do so in the comments down below. I would like to exchange with you guys and I would just like to watch these videos, part one and part two. So yeah, um, today I'm not excited to watch these videos, but I just, I just have the feeling that I have to watch it just to know who that person was. You know, it is, it's weird. But yeah, so there are two parts of this video. One is 2020 Selena's Killer Part 1 and one is Selena's Killer Part 2. So there are two parts of this video. Let's start. She is a woman despised by millions of people in this country, in danger of being harmed, even though she's behind bars. Tonight, a revealing interview with the woman who killed Selena. You may remember that thousands of fans gathered in the streets to mourn the death of this vibrant young Hispanic singer a rising star in the music world. And at the same time, a spider climbs up right here. Do you see that? Do you see that? Why, what are you doing here? Isn't that weird? I think that's weird. Let's get that spider out. I'm not going to kill it. Just get it out of here. Come here. I'm going to save you. Do you see that? That's so weird. Oh my God. Many still wonder, why did she die? Selena wanted to become a household name, and earlier this year, in a most tragic incident, she got her wish. Selena died at the hands of her trusted friend, the woman you will meet now. What happened that day? Was Selena the victim of a woman obsessed? Only one person knows for sure. Deborah Roberts brings you her story. 35-year-old Yolanda Saldivar is beginning a life behind bars. Two months ago, a jury found her guilty of first-degree murder. <coughs> it makes me sick to look at that person. Like, it's not even one minute in and I'm coughing. I don't even know why I'm coughing. <coughs> I got like those chills, but not the good kind of chills. Oof, I don't like that. I really don't. ...of Mexican-American singing sensation, Selena. She was given a life sentence, that's 30 years before a chance of parole. Saldivar will spend those years in a Texas women's prison under heavy guard, isolated from other inmates who may want revenge against her. She never testified during her trial, but Saldivar agreed to tell us her side of the story. We hope to make some sense of a killing that has wounded and bewildered Selena's family and fans. It made me out to be, to be a monster. I just want to say, I did not kill Selena. It was an accident. 
and my conscience is clear. Selena was only 23 when she died at the hands of Saldivar. She was a Grammy-winning, undisputed queen of Tejano music. A lively mix of European sounds and Mexican salsa that was rapidly crossing into the mainstream because of Selena's popularity. The spirited young singer began her career as a child, performing in the family band formed by her father, himself a singer in his youth. Selena's flashy style and powerful vocals lifted her family out of poverty. In the last year of her life, she was a millionaire who was on the verge of a crossover career. And Yolanda Saldivar thought so too. She sought out Selena in 1991 in the family's hometown of Corpus Christi, offering to form a fan club. Soon, she was always at the singer's side, even quitting her nursing job to work full-time for Selena and run her new boutique business. She was like a cuddling bear, teddy bear, that she would allow you to, to love her. I told her that, that I loved her like a daughter. And she goes, come on, stop it. I can't, oh. Her eyes, look in, look in her eyes, look really close into her eyes. She is lying so much, like I get the chills, but not the good type of chills, like those, ah, oh, I can't explain, but everything she says out of her mouth and those soulless eyes, it's just, this makes me so angry to watch, like really, it makes me so angry. You know, I give you that ride. She would call me mom uh, on the phone. She, she called you mom? Yeah, she said, hi mom, how you doing? Selena's parents question whether their daughter called Saldivar mom, but says she was close to the family until early this year. That's when Abraham Quintanilla, Selena's father and business manager, says he discovered forged checks and other evidence that Saldivar was embezzling money from both the fan club and the boutiques. In March, both he and Selena confronted Saldivar. My last words were her was that I was going to go to the police to see what we could do, uh, you know, to charge her with something. She was stealing money. And uh, this triggered the woman. That day, March 9th, he says Saldivar left town with Selena's business records. Four days later... Just look at her face right here. I know she stole money, she did all of that, but do you see those sneaky eyes? There's just something so weird, so bad about her. I mean, yeah, obviously she killed Selena, but that was a huge warning sign that something is wrong with her, that she was stealing from them. Like they were letting her into their lives and then she ended up stealing and telling her that she would call and tell her she's hey mom like what what is that like that that's so pathetic I, th I think she was in her jail cell and just thinking what she can say to like sound innocent but that makes her look so bad even though she already looks very bad but like what she bought a gun on March 31st, Saldivar returned to Corpus Christi and asked Selena to meet her at the Days Inn Motel. She told her to come alone. The two women argued, and suddenly there was a gunshot. An injured and hysterical Selena raced from the motel room to the lobby, where she collapsed. And that shot caused Selena to bleed to death. She was running toward the lobby. She just bled to death. Prosecutor Carlos Valdez pieced together a motive. The defendant had wrapped up her whole life uh, around uh, Selena Quintanilla Perez. Her whole world was walking out the door and she wouldn't stand for it, so she shot her. Let's keep her alive and enjoy her music. The grief-stricken Mexican-American community mourned Selena as an idolized daughter or sister. Thousands turned out for a candlelight vigil, saying goodbye to a shining young role model who never forgot her roots. The one thing no one disputes is what ultimately happened here at the Days Inn in room 158. It's me so sad. It's so sad to see that. Shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't want to cry, but... 
Like that woman did not only kill Selena, she robbed the whole world of a legacy. And that's the point in here. And she's just psychopathic. She's like this psycho lady and they are still interviewing her and trying to find out what she did and why she did it. And But she will never tell the truth. Like. It really just hurts to watch, like... It was Yolanda Saldivar who fired the single gunshot that killed the young singer. But why the shooting happened is still the subject of intense speculation, weeks after the jury's conviction. The prosecution contends it was a case of cold-blooded murder committed by an obsessed fan out for revenge. But Saldivar insists it was all a tragic accident, a story she still stands by today. What happened that morning when Selena arrived? Did she say she wanted to fire you? That ne never, never, she never told me that. I was telling her to leave. And I said, I, it's over, Selena, it's over. I can't work for you no more. I can't work for you no more. She went down, she grabbed my feet and told me not to leave her. And I picked her up and I told her, just leave. And I grabbed the gun, put it to my head. I pulled the thing back. And I said, if you don't leave, I'm gonna do it to Lena. And she got up and she says, Mom, we need to talk about this, we need to talk about this, I'm gonna close the door. And when she was walking to the door, she was going at an angle. And I told her, don't close the door. And in that instant, the gun went off. But why didn't it hit you? Because I was pointing to the door, and it just went. Did you know she was hit? No, I did not know. There was blood along the door seal. I didn't even look at the door. But there was blood all over the room. How could you not see it? The pictures that I see, they're dots. Saldivar left the blood-spattered room and headed to her car with the gun still in her hand. She said she was looking for Selena. The next nine hours became a standoff with police. Saldivar sat in her car, gun to her head, negotiating into the night. Before Props to the interviewer, the Boar Roberts, for keeping such, such a straight face. I don't think I would be able to do that. She's doing such a professional job interviewing this cold-blooded murderer and asking the right questions. She's asking the right questions and the answers are just so... You, you can laugh about these answers because they're so... They're so full of lies. Like, yeah, of course she was doing like that and she shot Selena. What is that? Like... Ah, <sighs> really. That's the worst lie I've ever heard in my life. We're finally giving herself up. Many people have wondered that if you were really trying to kill yourself, why didn't you commit suicide when you were in the car all those nine and a half hours? There were many things going through my mind. I could hear her in my mind telling me, stay behind, stay behind. I hear her tell me, you don't commit suicide because I'll never see you in heaven. Jurors didn't believe Saldivar. It took them less than three hours to convict her. From Prosecutor start, Valdez uh, insists there was case, no evidence of an alone, accidental shooting. Say, this was a, a simple case of cold-blooded murder. There was an intent involved and she did exactly what she set out to do. Despite all the evidence against her, Saldivar gives a strikingly different account of the shooting and the weeks that led up to it, contradicting witnesses and the Quintanilla family. Did you steal any money from Selena's business? No, ma'am. Not ever. Can you tell me if you were angry? Frustrated? No, I was never angry. I was never frustrated. Quintanilla, now living with the silence of his daughter's empty recording studio, says his documents prove that Saldivar embezzled more than $100,000 from Selena. He also says he was increasingly bothered by Saldivar's possessiveness toward his daughter. 
And I did start noticing uh, an obsession with Selena. In my opinion, she was living a life through Selena. Here you have a person that's uh, nowhere in life, right before uh, uh, she killed Selena, I found out that she was talking, stalking Selena by phone. There were allegations that you were in love with her. And that's not true either. And if people think that Selena and I had a lesbian relationship, you're not a fan of Selena. Why did you decide you needed a gun? It was after threats had been made against my life. Who threatened you? Her father. Abraham Quintanilla threatened you? Yes. Quintanilla insists he never threatened Sal Devar. He's convinced that she bought the gun to kill Selena. She saw me as the person who initiated this. And she saw me as the enemy. What, how much more could, he, could she hurt us than killing Selena? Is there any way Selena or her family could have seen this kind of a death coming? No. No tips, no, no. clues? No. Forensic psychologist Dr. Reed Malone. So this was part one of the video and it makes me just so sick to hear her lies. Because she's lying. She's lying so much. There's not one ounce of truth in there. The fact that she got fired and then she got a gun and told Selena to meet her at the motel alone. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? That's so, it, uh, it's so sick. This is so, 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 so sick. But let's continue to watch the second part. ...expert on obsession and violence. Though he never examined Sal Devar, we asked him to take a look at our interview with her for any hints of obsessive homicidal behavior. He says the strongest clue is that she brought a gun to the final meeting. Why is there a loaded gun there when perhaps there's a job termination? And two, why does she put the gun to her head in order to end the relationship? Those two are strikingly abnormal and are usually absent in any kind of relationship ending. Dr. Malloy says Sal Devar appears to fit a pattern of an obsessive personality. We ask him about her claim that it was she who was ending the relationship instead of Selena. I told her no, that it was over. Now, Yolanda is describing here the exact opposite of what Selena's family has described. Yes, yeah, sometimes there's a reversal in these cases of roles. And what we may be seeing here is the person that's about to be abandoned in order to understand it or justify it in her own mind becomes the person in the position of doing the abandoning. So her version turns everything around. Exactly. The roles shift and the, and the roles alter and we have tragedy. He was particularly struck by Saldivar's answer to our next question. If you could go back and do something differently on that morning of March 31st, what would you do? I would want her to kill me. Dr. Malloy says that's an indication that um, Saldivar expected one of them to die older. that day. Right. So if you could go back in time, I would say I would not maybe look, take a gun with me or like I want us both to be alive, but no, there's no other option. Either she's gonna die or Selena is going to die. So one of them is going to die. And how is that normal? Like in, it's just effed up. It's so effed up. Like this makes me so angry. Like it, it makes my blood boil to see her lie so much. But what can you expect from that person really? Instead of her saying, I wish we were both safe and nothing had happened, instead she has to direct the aggression toward herself rather than Selena. So you think that it appears that she was considering suicide here? I think so. I think so. That's why these situations are extremely dangerous and unpredictable, because that homicidal impulse is shifting rapidly between the wish to kill the self and the wish to kill the other. And there were just seconds there to determine who was going to die. Perhaps even less than that. The Throughout our interview, Sal Devar kept referring to a mysterious deep secret that she shares with Selena. She says they even talked about it on the day of the murder. You talked about a secret to 
that you're protecting a secret. That's true. What secret? I can't indulge that at this point. Because it's, because my case is an appeal. But I know that one day, people will know. Let's stop it there. I don't know if there's a secret, but I do know that by her saying she has a secret, she maintains a special, exclusive relationship with Selena that nobody else has. Even now? Even now. Yolanda, whether it was accidental or... A little pause right there. I, uh, it's so true what he's saying. I mean, he's a professional, but that would have been my guess too, that by stating that she has a secret, she's making herself interesting, you know? That there's something that you don't know about my relationship with Selena, and you will never know because it's something special. So she's holding up that special bond still, even though she's the reason why Selena isn't here anymore. She's portraying that image of specialty and like again the fact that she she says Selena called her mom it's so effed up it's so effed up it was accidental or whether it was intentional you were responsible for Selena's death how do you live with that yeah it was an accident I'm dead inside I have no feelings <sighs> I'm like a walking shell Selena will always be a daughter for me. She will always be that gentle child I never had. And I thank her for it. There's a link to Selena now that nobody can uh, uh, devalue nor uh, uh, remove. You know, through one act, she has now established a notoriety that will remain, and her name will be linked to Selena's memory. And that for her, in a sense, reestablishes that uh, special fantasy. Deborah, Yolanda Saldivar is in prison for 30 years without parole, right? Right. But she said that, that, that she wants her case to uh, come up for appeal. Is that going to happen? Well, wait, so, so she's in jail for 30 years. So 1995 was the year that Selena got killed by her. So that means there's four years left until she comes out of jail, is that right? Four years left and that woman is out and about again. Wow. Wow, that woman is crazy. She's crazy. Like, 30 years is not enough. She, she, she murdered someone she should be in jail for life why is she only there for 30 years that's nothing compared to what she did to selena Her lawyers are trying for an appeal. They're also trying for a new trial. They have a hearing scheduled this month at which they'll argue that parts of the trial were handled improperly. And they'll also argue that police ignored her comments that the shooting was an accident and that they deliberately left it out of her confession. But they're arguing this before the same judge who heard the trial. Mm -hmm. So many are skeptical about whether it will work. Selena was only 23 and on the verge of becoming a megastar. And the thing that's so heartbreaking for her father is that he will never know how well she could have done. Mm -hmm. Ironically, her last album that she recorded before her death sold three million copies. And now she's a legend. She is. Tragic. All, all around tragic. Thank you, Deborah. Again, props to their interviewer, Deborah. Deborah. Deborah, I'm sorry, I'm saying Deborah. Deborah Roberts. She's doing such a professional job, staying neutral as possible. You can tell by her face, facial expressions that she despises that woman she's interviewing. But she's still very professional, very neutral, asking the right questions at the right time. Props to her, really. But again, in four years, she will be out of prison. This woman will be out of prison. Who killed Selena? A legacy, a legend. Since they were firing her, right? There was no other, other option for her to stay alive. There was no other reason because she was so obsessed with Selena. It was either she was going to die or Selena was going to die. These were the only two options in her, in her world at that time. How that man explained it was so right. Like, since she is the reason Selena's dead, there will always be that connection to her, meaning 
they will always be kind of intertwined, which is so sad for everybody, for the family, that this sociopath is connected to Selena now and basically forever. There was this comment saying, if I didn't mean to kill anyone, I would bawl my eyes out and apologize and apologize, and that is so true. And this Yolanda woman, I don't even want to put her full name in my mouth, it's so disgusting. She is just completely fine with the situation. She's just, yeah, she even seems like happy. She's, you know, she's, even though she's not smiling, she's like this inner happy of knowing that Selena will always be connected with her name and that she will always be relevant since she has that secret. She doesn't have any secret, she just wants to stay relevant and that makes me so angry, right? I don't have anything more to say, it just again makes my blood boil to see her lie so much. I just wish Selena the best in terms of that she can rest, really, that she can rest in peace and that her family can be in peace with the situation of what happened. I know it is so unfortunate. It really reminds me of that on that case where there was something similar like a couple of years ago where that YouTuber Christina Grimmy, Christina Grimmy, she was big on YouTube and she had that fan signing autographing uh, hour. And there was this crazy person who just straight up killed her, a fan of her, again a fan of her. Who killed her and that situation reminded me so much of that i don't know what will happen in four years when that crazy person will be out of jail how how people will handle that situation especially like selena's fans family and so on how do you handle that knowing that her murderers will be out there in a couple of years like i don't know how i would handle that i would go to my lawyers and tell them that she would be she should be in jail for her whole life like why is she coming out? I don't... I... That, that's the big question mark I have left from this video. Why is her murderer coming out of jail? She should be in jail for life. Yeah, again, rest in peace, rest in heaven, Selena. Thank you so much for your beautiful music and 23 is so incredibly young and you did so much for 23. Like something that people wouldn't do their whole lives. And thank you so much again, Selena. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think. Is that the right way to judge? To let that murderer out and about? I don't think so. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I would really like to change with you here and hear your opinions on this topic. Yes, that's it for today's video and goodbye.